Today we're doing lab 14 and it's enzyme reactions in food. Specifically we'll be looking at bananas. So today's reaction you saw in your pre-lab will be hydrogen peroxide breaking down into bubbles and the enzyme is catalase. In part A we're going to look at the effect of pH on enzyme activity. Just a reminder that bubbles will show us that our enzyme is active. So to start with, um, we've cut up the banana into roughly equal sized chunks. Um, we want to control as many variables as possible, right? So we are using the same size banana, the same size test tubes um, for each of these. So first off here, we're going to put one milliliter of water into the first test tube. And then we're going to take one milliliter of hydrochloric acid and put that into the second test tube. Again, we want to control variables so it's consistent, so we've got about the same amount of liquid in both test tubes. And then in the third test tube, we're going to get some sodium hydroxide, so this is a base, and we're going to add that to our test tube. So we have roughly, not exactly, but roughly the same amount of um, liquid in each test tube. Now we're going to test the pH um, in test tube 1 pH paper turns kind of green, it looks like maybe 6 or 7 pH. Here, very different, this is the test tube with acid, we have a pH of maybe around 1. And then the third test tube, um, we have a pH maybe close to 12 or even 13. Um, and those numbers match with what we would expect. So right now we've just got the enzyme in the banana sitting there in water, acid, or base. Now we're going to add the substrate, the hydrogen peroxide and we're going to add an equal quantity to each test tube, so a couple of squirts to each test tube. We didn't expect to see a reaction before because we didn't have a substrate, but now we've got a substrate. And so if there is a reaction, remember, we're going to look for bubbling. Um, we're going to stir it up just a little bit in each test tube to make sure that um, the peroxide gets mixed in and encounters that banana. Um, kind of random, a couple of the bananas float, one does not. That's not really important. Um, but what you do want to be watching for here is bubbles, right? If bubbles are showing up, that means that our catalase is breaking that peroxide down. Um, you can see that thick kind of layer showing up in test tube one. Those are bubbles at the top there. Um, over on the right, banana's turning yellow, but we don't really see any bubbles there. Um, so we can, after a few more minutes, there was a time lapse there. You can see a lot of bubbles form in that first test tube and um, roughly about two centimeters or so of bubbles um, when we had just the water present. But we didn't see anything in the others. For part B, we're gonna look at temperature change on enzyme activity, and again, the enzyme is active if I see bubbles. So first of all, I've got some room temperature water. You wanna write down the temperature that you measure there. Um, then I have some ice water. And again, you want to write down the temperature that you see there. And then finally, we have some boiling water. So we've got um, room temperature, freezing, and boiling. Um, and you've got three temperatures for those. Three test tubes again, um, controlling the banana variable. So we've got approximately the same size of bananas. This experiment is very qualitative, so I didn't like go weigh the bananas out. I could make it more quantitative and measure things more um, if I wanted to, but we're just kind of doing it simply to start with. So um, we're going to add room temperature water to the first banana, then we're going to get some of this ice water and add it to the second banana. Remember your enzyme, your catalase, is in the banana, so we're changing the temperature of the enzyme here. So that second test tube, the enzyme is getting very cold right now. Um, in the third test tube, we add some hot water and then we put that banana with the hot water into the hot water bath. So we let those sit for about five minutes. Um, we have just cooled the enzymes in the second test tube and heated the enzymes pretty hot in the third test tube. So room temperature, cold, and hot. Remember, there's no substrate yet, no peroxide, so there hasn't been any bubbling or reactions. So now we're going to add that hydrogen peroxide. Um, we're going to add, again, about the same amount to each test tube, so a couple of squirts. Bubbles, if you can see bubbles, um, indicate that we have a reaction forming, that our enzyme is active. So look out for those bubbles. Again, a couple bananas float, one sinks. Um, that's not real significant, but what you want to watch for is those layers of bubbles forming. 
And again, kind of a white layer, and you can see some of those bubbles bubbling up. Here's after a few more minutes, um, the room temperature, the cold, and the hot. Normally, heat speeds up reactions, so you'll want to think about why that last one didn't speed up. For the last part, we're going to look at changing the substrate concentration. Um, so that means changing the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Same experiment, right? We want to be consistent, so we only change the substrate this time. So banana goes into the test tubes. Quite exciting to watch it slide down. Um, then we're going to add water. Um, we want a total of about three mils in each test tube. So we didn't add any water to the first one. We added um, about two mils to the second one and about three mils to the third one. Now here comes the substrate. So we're going to put pure substrate, which means that it's a 3% peroxide solution in that first test tube. So the concentration of peroxide is 3% in the first one. In the second one, um, we have about a 1% concentration, and in the third one, we only added a couple drops, so a very low concentration, 0.03, roughly. So you can see some differences in bubbling here. Um, first test tube, we've got thick bubbles forming around that banana. Second one, you can see some bubbles coming up. Third one, maybe one or two, three, four, or five bubbles. Um, so over time, here's what that would look like. Um, a lot more bubbles in that first one than in the second, and the third has almost no bubbles at all. So remember, bubbles help us understand if the enzyme is active or not. So revisiting these um, a few minutes later, um, here are those bananas at different pHs. You can see some bubbling difference. Here are those bananas from part B um, at different temperatures. And then here are those bubbles from part C, um, and you can see a difference. So this was where I did labs all day for you. Um, time to clean up. Thanks for watching and thanks for being a good sport about all this.